Eric Darling here with Sir Eric Darling Data. Uh, <laughs> and today I want to talk about SQL Server 2017 for some reason. Don't ask me why. Uh, it's 2000, midway through 2022. But we got CU30 for SQL Server 2017. Very exciting stuff in there. Just kidding. It's not mostly not very exciting. Uh, but there was one thing in there that caught my eye because it's something that's near and dear to my heart. It's query performance stuff. I don't know if you know that about me. I tend to tend to traffic a bit in that area of the world. So <clears throat> this is version. Uh, let's zoom, let's use zoom it. Proper human beings here. Well, I wait for uh, Mark Rosinovich to re release a new version that does screen recording. That'll be nice. But let's zoom in a little bit here and let's look at version 14.0.3451.2. Wonderful. Get that sorted out. Uh, well, and if you go, let's go back. Oh, oh, thanks, Mac Toolbar, for showing up and ruining my recording. Photo bombing piece of crap hate this thing. Uh, so let's go back over to SSMS real quick and let's just make sure that I am on SQL Server 2017 14.0.3451.2. So we're all sorted out there. That's good for us. We got that all figured out. We're doing doing wonderful. So known issues in this update. What do we have going on here? What's what's happening in this release? Well, uh, something about a latch timeout. Ooh, high availability. Don't care. Oh, trace flag one two three two three, great. We are to twelve thousand three hundred twenty-three trace flag. Probably higher at this point. Uh, let's see. Uh, match lock escalation. Uh, change tracking. Who cares? Access violation occurs when you try to truncate specific partitions using the partition function. Uh, seems funny. Uh, dropping temp tables causes an unresolved deadlock and dump file. Ooh, wow. Don't drop those temp tables. Uh, let's see. An assertion failure occurs when your query contains the merge statement. Big surprise. Uh, let's see. When you run DBCC check DB with extended logical checks against a database by using the table valued function TVF that uses indexes. Here is the error message. Table percent ls does not exist. I'm going to pause here for a moment and ask you, why do we accept this? <laughs> why do we tolerate this? If we can't get any sort of decent information about uh, what fixes are, are out there for a piece of software, why can't we get them in, in something that's at least understandable? Like, not everything has to be a book, but a complete thought would be nice. I don't understand when this started happening or why this started happening, but the quality of the documentation for SQL Server is real, real broken. Uh, if you look at error, like especially new error messages or new extended events, there is absolutely no oversight in the in the in the language used in there. It's full of typos and just like they, they saw one. Uh, Aaron Bertrand brought one up to me yesterday, where uh, availability groups have a double dash between availability and groups, is or always on or something like that. That has never been what they've been called or how they've been named or <laughs> referred to. And uh, it, it, it really is just gone completely downhill. I don't know whose idea that was. Maybe, maybe, maybe Postgres has just infiltrated Microsoft and they're taking them down from the inside like termites. I don't know. Who knows? Tough to tell out there. It's a, it's a harsh world, isn't it? But here's the one that I want to talk about. <clears throat> we'll talk about this wonderful little... Thing right here in Microsoft SQL Server 2017, running parameterized queries skips the cell on seek purge rule, therefore push down does not occur. Well, thankfully, this is something that I've been demoing for years because it's been a problem. Uh, I think the first time I ever read about it was in a Paul White blog post coming up on 10 years ago now. Crazy, right? 10-year-old performance bug in SQL Server. Well, I know they're not busy fixing performance bugs and certainly not busy writing adequate documentation for anything. So here we are <laughs> reading this. Uh, I'm not even going to bother with this one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, index creation script fails. Cool. Great. Great write-up. Whoever did that. Summer interns really working hard. Summer intern found the beer fridge, apparently. All right. Well, everyone's working from home, so everything's a beer fridge now. 
<laughs> anyway, let's go see if that actually is fixed. So uh, I've already created this index. I'm not going to sit there and make you watch me create an index over again, but just to make sure that we are on the same page here. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't, I didn't highlight select. There we go. My own quality is going downhill, I guess, too. So uh, let's take a look at the results here. So this thing was just restarted. Well, it's, this, this time isn't going to make any sense to you. It's actually about 8.30 in the morning here. But my VM is on West Coast time because I never bothered to change it because I don't care. Uh, it's a VM, right? Or is it cattle, not pets or whatever? Uh, but anyway, I am actually running the correct version of SQL Server to see this wonderful performance fiction, fix in action. I guess I shouldn't make fun of anyone else's uh, abilities when I can. Uh, but anyway, I, I've got an index on my, my, my posts table called Chunk. I forget why I called it that. It was a long time ago. Uh, but the index is on owner user ID and score descending, and it includes creation date and last, act, last activity date. And that index matches up pretty well with the goals of this view. Right? So we have a windowing function on owner user ID, and score descending, and my my my, uh, my formatting of this thing is a little is disagreeable even to me. I don't I don't like the way that turned out. I'm going to fix that right here in front of all of you. All right, so now everything is on got its own line. No one no one has to share too much space. Everything's maintaining proper distance. Uh, but then we're selecting owner user ID, score, creation date, and last activity. So the, that index works out pretty well for everything that we're trying to do in there, right? We've got everything for our dense rink completely in order, and we've got uh, our, our select list columns in the includes up there. So joy to the world. An index has come. So what should that fix fix? Well, we're going to turn on a query plan here, and we're going to run this select, right? So we run this thing, and we have an execution plan. Ooh, let's zoom in on this execution plan and see what happened. Now, even though uh, we've got a, a case of simple parameterization here, I don't. I, I have a feeling this doesn't stick. Uh, I could. I could do some extra stuff to validate that, but uh, I've already done that, and it's quite boring to watch. So we're gonna we're gonna skip that part. But if we look down here in the query plan, because we've used a literal value and uh, simple parameterization didn't didn't topple our query into the C, uh, we've got an index seek into our index called for some reason chunk. That takes 0 0.008 milliseconds. Wow. What a great query tuner that Eric Darling is. We should hire him to tune all our queries. Well, maybe not so fast. Uh, so that worked out pretty well, passing a literal value in, right? Everything got pushed down the query plan. Everything worked out great. Uh, happy, happy about that. But now let's create a stored procedure, right? Because if we go back to what that... that the cumulative update was talking about. This is when running a parameterized query, right? Parameterized. The literal value, well, even though it looked like it might have been simple parameterized, was not actual parameterized, right? There's a literal value in there. So now let's parameterize a query. Can't, can't get enough of the word parameterize. Makes me feel so very proper. So we're going to run this procedure. Or we're going to create this procedure here called Stinky Pete. I don't know why Pete's stinky. <laughs> Same reason I don't know why that index is chunky. <laughs> Mysteries of the world. Uh, but here we have a parameter called user ID, and we're going to pass that parameter to our view down here. All right, so auto user ID equals user ID. Remember, we've got this wonderful index for some reason named chunk that leads with owner user ID. And so we should have, just, just like when we pass in a literal value, we should get a perfectly good seek to that owner user ID value. But um, when I run this, and a uh, big reveal here, uh, this does not finish uh, in 0 0.008 milliseconds. In fact, uh, this catastrophe drags on for seven seconds. And if we look at the difference in the plan, let's zoom in real nice on that. Uh, we have an index scan now on the post table. Uh, that takes 2.213 seconds, a bit of a far cry uh, from the uh, 0.08 milliseconds. And that uh, just tends to get worse as we move on in the plan to a, a 2.289 and then 4.719 and then a 5.6. 2.8 and then uh, 6.054. So uh, six seconds 
total for the query execution plus a little bit of time for SSMS to to spit out and render our results. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty disappointing that uh, you know said, hey, we fixed something, and then uh, the, the the only demo I well the 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 best demo I have that shows the problem uh, still has a problem. So uh, thanks there. Perhaps a little bit extra QA would have helped that one. Uh, maybe that would, but maybe that wasn't even supposed to be in there. I don't know. Maybe maybe that'll get pulled out of the release notes. I couldn't tell you. Uh, no one no one from Microsoft talks to me anymore. Can't, don't know why. Uh, Miss Joe Sack, MongoDB got real lucky there. Well, anyway, uh, it is 8:40 a.m. now on Friday, and uh, uh, with with that, I think it's time to start drinking because uh, uh, there's there's just no hope for the world. Uh, that's it's going to be my new company tagline. There's no hope for the world. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for Beer Gut Magazine to buy me out. Anyway, uh, you have a nice day. I'm gonna I'm gonna go pour something now. <laughs>